Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today is part two of the Particle Emitter Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we've got a fresh emitter set up. And before I jump into this, I kind of want to go over some stuff from yesterday because I know it's a long video and I believe I may have missed or quickly gone over a few things that confused a couple of people. And the primary one is these variances. So on our emitter, we have a number of your number of particles that are being spawned per frame. And then we have a variance. Then we have our lifespan, which is how many frames that particle is going to live. And then we have the lifespan variance. We also have velocity with velocity variance and inherent with inherent variance. And these variances are what I believe I confused people on because I, I kind of made a statement saying you might as well not have it in number that's beyond this. And, and I want to explain that. So we're going to pretend this top number, whether it's number or lifespan or velocity, it's all the same. It works the same. Let's say we have our parameter set at 100. So we're spawning 100 particles. And then we add a variance of 20. What this is doing is say we have 100 particles. Then we have a variance of 20. This means out of 100, we have either 10 less or 10 more. That's our variance of 20 out of 100, giving us 90 to 110 particles that are going to be born or 90 to 110 lifespan variance or 90 to 110 velocity variance. It all works the same. So say we change this variance to 100. Now we just switched our variance to be 100. And you can see our variance extended in both sides. So now our new variance would be our new number of particles being born would be 50 to 150. And same goes with your lifespan and your velocity. So it's going to change that by that variance. Now, what I meant by not going beyond is if I keep increasing this variance and say, make it 200 and I'll switch numbers so we can actually see this because I'm a visual person. So I like seeing numbers. So if I switch this to 200, that means our new variance is going to go from zero to 200, if you see that. Now, once we start pushing this number beyond, we start going into negative. If you see this, now we're going into negative because our variance is getting larger. And in the case of particles or the case of lifespan, our number of particles are our frames of lifespan, we can't go into negative because you're not going to have negative particles born and you're not going to have negative lifespan. You can, however, have negative velocity. So this is the point where it starts going backwards, which which is fine. I said you shouldn't go beyond that number. And primarily I was talking about your number and your lifespan, number of particles and lifespan. But with your variance, you do do that quite often for whatever look say an explosion, you're going to have an explosion going out in all directions, which means it's going to be flying in a negative velocity. So that is fine. But this is how variances work. Hope that clears some stuff up and we will jump back into our emitter. Now, the one other thing I want to clarify because I didn't cover, I did say I was going to cover these uh, color modes right here or use style color or use color from region. I did not cover use color from region. So we're going to go up to our region and I'm going to switch it to bitmap. And I have this little footage right here and I'm going to input it into our emitter. So now that's what's emitting and I'm going to bump this up. So we have a lot more. And make sure we don't have any velocity going. So if I push play, actually, let me really bump this up to say a thousand so you can see what's going on. 
so this is basically generating particles based off of this image. And currently it's set to use style color, which means we can come in our style and we can change our color. But if I change this to use color from region, now it's using our colors from our background. And that's what it means color from region. So whatever we have going into our bitmap, it's gonna pull those colors from that media and use those colors to color your particles. So we can disconnect this and jump back into our region. And today we're going to use the cube. And for our style, we're going to cover point today. Now the point pretty much just adds a particle on every single pixel. Not every single pixel, but at a pixel level. That's it. You can't make it larger. You can't make it smaller. It's pixel based. So one point on a pixel is all the points doing. Now you have different add modes. So let's get a whole bunch of particles. And I'm going to change this color so we can see what's going on. And I did not change that back to use style color. We have two modes. We have add and we have merge. What the add mode does is it's actually adding on top of each other. So you can see these colors are adding on top of each other. You can see that's super bright because there's a bunch of pixels. But if I change this to merge, it's just going to merge them and keep the color all the same. So that's the difference between add and merge. Now down here we have color controls and you can choose whatever color you want to change your pixels. And we have color variances. So if we say want to change the variance of our red, we can change that so you can see it's changing. If we want to change the green variance, we can change that the blue variant. So every pixel is going to change that amount of pixel color that you vary. So let me zero all these out and you can lock your color variance as well. Now the color over life pretty much depends on what you have your lifespan set to. And here we've got 95 frames. So our lifespan can be 95 to last the full footage. And we're going to make some changes so we can uh, see what's going on here. And you notice our pixels are moving out of the bounds. And this is something that happens with uh, this cube. So because remember, this cube is 3D. So if we got it right in the middle, you're looking directly on kind of move it off we're seeing some of those additional pixels so that's why it looks like that but I'm going to push play and we're going to give a little velocity to this and the best way to do this is just go to the end and I want to end my velocity right towards the end there we go Now, if we go back to our style and we select this color over life, I can change this color. So in the beginning stages, it's red and I can add one more in the end stages. We can make it say yellow, but you notice the color isn't changing much. So this is one other thing I kind of failed to explain yesterday. Now, since we have this color of our actual particles changed, it's making our, our color over life kind of weird. And this is why yesterday I changed this to a middle gray. So if you see, as I change this, our colors are changing a little different. So I tend to leave it in kind of a upper, higher grayish. So our colors show exactly what we're picking. So that was the point to change that to middle gray. So our colors were correct on our uh, color over light. 
So let's change this to a different color. So now we've got our color changing over the lifespan of the particles. And changing your look of these points, you really can't do much because they're points, they're pixels. But we can do different things to this to make it more interesting. So if we go to our controls, we can change up our lifespan variants. We can vary our velocity. can change our angle variance. So now we've got something like that. And again, not too exciting. But we can go to our region with our cube and we can go to the beginning and keyframe our rotation. Go to the end. Say we'll make this like 400. So now when we play, we get a little bit of rotation going on. And if we go up here, and we change our inheritance, kind of affect that a little more. And to change the actual look of these particles, we could say, go into our render and we could blur them and we can add a little glow. So we've got like a different look, but this is the point where yesterday I said, I, I like doing everything afterwards because it's a little more controllable and you can get better effects. So we're going to add a glow. And on our glow, we're gonna up our glow size and up our glow. So we get a little better look. And then you can come in here and start blurring out your particles a little bit. And you can animate or do whatever you need to do to uh, get the look you're looking for. And so if we want to make this a little more exciting, we could uh, come in here and We will animate our velocity. We'll have it zero and then uh, say frame six, crank it up. We'll go to uh, frame, frame 12 maybe, crank it up a little more. this frame and we'll slow it way down and we'll go to the middle over here maybe speed it up a little bit and go to the end and then slow it down and I don't know what I'm doing I'm just doing something that's going to be a little different and for our velocity variance we can always keyframe that too And I'm just finding these keyframes of this velocity. So I can change it up. So now we've got something kind of like that. Kind of blowing out.
And since our, our lifespan is getting pushed out of the way, we can always come back to our style and bring our lifespan down. So we're getting those colors back in there. So just be creative and mess around with it. And that is the cube region using the point style for our emitter node. I will see you in tomorrow's node breakdown.